Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Westboro. Um, the purpose of this show, if, if you haven't seen it, my name is Art Bergeron. My day job, I work do elder law at Myrick O'Connell, which is right here in Westboro. But the purpose of this show is not, it's, this is not about elder law. It's about Frank and Mary, my make-believe couple whose goal in life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if you're here in Westboro, you want to be right here. You don't want to go to Northboro. You don't want to go to Marlboro. You want to be right here. And so in order to help you understand the people you need to know and the programs you need to know about, uh, I've got this wonderful co-host, Shelby Marshall, everybody in, in Westboro seems to know. Um, and she finds these great guests. Now, as you know, this is COVID-19 time. So we've been doing these shows uh, special. We've been doing them once a week because we know life changes a lot during COVID-19. Uh, we may be changing that format in the future as things lighten up. But in the meantime, um, we wanted to really talk a little bit about the player, the player that makes all of this happen, um, and the players, which who, who are the folks at Westboro TV. But Shelby is going to introduce all of them. Shelby Marshall, my good friend. Oh, good morning, Arthur. Thanks so much, and welcome to our viewers. Uh, so this is actually our third installment. Um, if you follow along with Frank and Mary or you want to follow along, you can go online and, and watch the shows. Um, but uh, yeah, are we doing a, we're doing a, we're doing one of those box sets, too. So they could all they, we, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll have these in, in DVD. Yeah. We'll be selling them. Right. Signed. right of course. Yep. Signed. Pro, pro, proceeds to Westboro Cable. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. So um, so we have um, uh, on with us on uh, chairman of the board of Westboro TV, Steve Hart. And we also have the studio manager, Aiden Horgan, who is always present with us on these shows, but he's behind the scenes and he keeps us on time and he makes sure that the quality of the show is delivered and helps us with all the technology and all of that. But with, for the past two shows, uh, we had Stephen and Karen on and then we've been talking a lot about um, local access television, why it's so important, how it's evolved. And so this is the third in that series. And we're so excited to have uh, both of these awesome guys on with us today. So welcome back. And Aiden, you're always here with us. So welcome again. Yeah, it's, it's nice to finally be uh, to seen, you know. <laughs> it's just great. And, 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 before, and before we continue with the show, a quick round of applause for Aiden, who's made this happen now for like over a year. I think we're supposed to do this. I think this is the oh, 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 oh. Yeah, like <laughs> the quiet applause or something I've seen on Zooms great. and all. Thank you. Anyway, so we sort of, we left, you know, where we last left our show, we were talking about, you know, kind of all the work that uh, Westboro TV has done. We talked about how Massachusetts as a state has invested um, and kind of legislated um, monies being allocated to a uh, local access TV, if I'm saying that correctly. And, um, and we were talking, we started to talk about the crystal ball of kind of Westboro TV. And um, so I'm going to really turn it over to Steve and Aiden and just give us a sense of where is Westboro TV going and how to, how to sort of these times, these past four to five months, maybe kind of inform that in a different way. Yeah, hi, good morning, everybody. Um, it's a really good question and one that challenges myself, Karen, and, and the entire board sort of on a daily basis. So, uh, you know, when we look into the crystal ball, I'm not sure, uh, you know, a bit like the the, the, the fairground gypsy, if I, if I can use that phrase, that, that uh, you know, who knows what we're going to get. But um, I, think, I think, first of all, it's to step back slightly from the future and say, first of all, we have to protect what we have. We have to ensure that what we have is is fit for purpose, but also looking to the future, what can we do to improve? And, and that's why we've invited Aidan along this morning to talk a little bit more about that. But um, I think there's two or three things that are really interesting. One of the things I think, Arthur, you referenced last week was the um, the senior population that, you know, it really makes up a considerable number of our, our audience, uh, particularly on, on cable TV. Um, and I reflected on that and I thought, hey, you know, there's something that we are very proud of at Westboro TV, and that's how we involve the young people in town. And so, you know, when I start to think about that, I look at the, um, the interns that we, we have on, a, on an annual basis. Uh, I look at the um, young people that come into summer camps, and you may have uh, experienced that, uh, Arthur, if you've ever come in during the summer to, to do a recording, you're, you're probably wading your way through uh, hordes of young people really enjoying themselves and really getting stuck in and involved. And 
I think you know, one of the challenges we have is how do we actually you know, ensure that those young people today become our viewers, uh, you know, our community of the future. And so um, just thinking about that, one of the things Karen and I are talking about is almost this well, is actually about having uh, you know, almost a, a young people's, a, a Westboro TV alumni um, of young people that can actually, we can reach out to and say, hey, would you like to be our think tank? Would you like to be our focus group? Because I have to tell you that, you know, I think I referenced it last uh, last week. You know, if you think about Facebook, we didn't know that Facebook existed uh, six or seven years ago. You know, it was Tim Novak who, who brought it along to us and said, I think this is probably a good uh, a good vehicle for us to uh, to actually adopt. Um, I don't know about the vehicles of the future. I don't know about how we're going to communicate in the future. But I'll guarantee you the best people to ask are the people who, who are actually doing it right now. And, 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 and so... I think it's really important that we think about bringing those people on board to help us in that crystal ball gazing and help give us a direction for the future. Yeah, um, that's an excellent point, Steve. You know, I hadn't thought about it when you when you position it that way. You're right. We do have so many young people bringing content forward behind the scenes, very interested, and yet we really think about our. I think our viewership is a you know, mature, whatever that age is, call it 50 plus, right? Yeah. But those are the people that are watching it because their parents or their their seniors or whatever the case may be. But I, 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 this is brilliant. Really, it is. I mean, to think about like, where is this going and how do we engage those individuals to really inform that? Yeah, Aiden, I don't know. You, you Obviously, you, uh, you are when those young people come in, you're the link. You know, you're you and Jeff and and, and Karen are, are, the, are not just the the mentors, but 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 the guides. Uh, you you learn from those people. What what do you think about the the you know, how do we use those people today, those youngsters today? Well, the great thing is that uh, you know we've we've been doing um, summer camps and and always trying to connect with the schools. Um, and uh, the great thing that we see is is the younger generation that does come in and see what we do in our studio uh, is always so connected. You know, they, they, um, they put their all into the things that they do with us, um, which is a great thing to see. Yeah. And, and I and, think and from, and from your perspective, it, I'm just curious, from your perspective, because you're seeing them all the time. And of course, to us, you're young. To them, you're old, right? And so, like, who is this old guy who is working at Westboro Cable, you know, and he's still, you know, he's losing his hair and the blah, blah, blah. So, but from, from your perspective watching them, how are, how are they thinking about taking the technologies that you're using all the time or that they're using all the time and incorporating Westboro Cable? Because I think that's kind of the interesting, the interesting question is, you know, we're, we, you know, I definitely don't know, you know, you know way more than us, but we all agree that they know way more than any of us because of where it's going. So I'm just curious about how they're thinking, you know, yeah. from your sense, how are they thinking about it? And I, and I would add to that as Aiden responds, that they're not only taking the technology and then the, the, the platform, if you will, of Westboro TV, but then kind of the social aspect of their world and how, how do those elements converge yeah they they definitely keep us on our toes on the uh on the new technology side um you know they they come in and and they have ideas that we may not never have even thought of um so it's it is nice to see every single time we have a new group of kids the new ideas the new um, the new show ideas or, or uh, video ideas that they might have or they might show us a new uh, app that they like or that they've been using. The, my favorite thing is when, when a uh, uh, student comes in and, and kind of shows us what they've been doing on their own just with uh, the technology that they've found. And it's, you know, it's amazing. It, it looks great. It sounds great. It, it, you know, they're, they're leaps and bounds, um, uh, ahead of us. And, and they, they keep us, um, you know, kind of striving to become better. Yeah. I, I think also it, just, just picking up on, on the technology side that, that, that people are used to nowadays that kids are using 
that technology, I think, is going to enable much more sort of feet on the street. We're not even needing to come into Westboro TV and well, learn how to use a camera and set right. up a tripod. They're just going to be uh, shooting the video and sending well, to, sending it to us. Right. Here, you know, here it is. It's almost like, you know, they're, I think we might have, speaking of technology, we might have lost Arthur, but hopefully he'll be back. The, you know, I almost think, I wonder if, do they come into the studio and not to go down a rabbit hole, but they come in and they're sort of like, wow, why do we need this studio? Because I've got everything I need here. I've got the person I'm engaging with, or I'm the interviewing myself and I have everything I need in my hands. So, you know, and just, and, and it really changes even the lens through which the viewer yeah. is seeing the, that information. Yeah. So that, that's, the, you know, so, so you know, back to, back to that, the, the young people, I think are, are core to, our future in the sense of our future thinking. But Aidan, we, we've also been investing in uh, technology as we go along. I mean, this is not new. Westboro TV, as I mentioned last week, has had some really good stewardship, has invested wisely. But even today, when they were putting more into the technology, what can you tell us about that? So uh, some of the things that we're looking for for the future is, um, is you know, uh, being able to increase the the services that we offer in our studio. So we were talking about how um, some kids might come in and, and say, oh, well, why do I need this uh, in here? Well, I, you know, have the, the phone that can record and edit and that kind of stuff. So we're always looking for um, how to make uh the quality and the services, the amount of services that we offer uh, bigger, you know, the better quality and more services. So um, on the studio side, we're, we're putting in a new um, uh, switcher and a new control room to be able to run um, our studio when we, when we finally get back in there after uh, COVID. Um, but we're, uh, we're putting in a new switcher so that we'll be able to do things like green screen and um, it's going to have a new audio uh, board for uh, adding services like podcasting, uh, which is becoming bigger and, um, you know, people can just, you know, listen to their podcasts as they go. We've, we've started to do a few of those um, as well as uh, using the space for more than just a television studio. So um, we're looking to make it a, a space that you could come in if you have a local band and you wanna record something, you know, you can come in and, and record that and master it and walk out with a CD or a file that um, you feel proud of. Um, so that's on the, the studio side, and, and uh, it's just, you know, uh, I, I, I feel happy when I think about, you know, the future and where we're going uh, as, as Westboro TV. Yeah, I think there's a good point, Sage, and thank you. And, and, and also, um, don't forget, we've just invested in a, a brand new system, which gives us the capacity you know, to, for all of that and more besides. And, and I think you know, looking to the future, Arthur, as, you, you know, as, as we're talking about today, who knows what it will hold. But um, we talked, I talked about uh, sort of local newspapers last week and how they've regionalized. And, you know, I just have to say to myself, well, will that happen with local access TV? Will, will every town, you know, currently we talked about, I think you mentioned about 340 out of 351 towns have a station right now. Will they be there post-COVID? Will they be there in the future? I don't know. But I think the need will be there. And so myself and the board are saying, well, OK, you know, if that need is there, are we equipped to be able to help out, to step in and maybe address that need for, for other towns other than Westboro? And the answer is, in my opinion, yes. You know, so it's that sort of future proofing, looking ahead. It may never happen, but if it does, then we may be able to take that opportunity. Um, I think the other thing that we don't, that, we haven't I, think that, I think that's a really, that's a really interesting notion and it may very well be, because I was thinking about it too, as, as after you talked about it last week, and it may very well be that you're, as, as opposed to their ending up with one kind of dominant station and the others evaporating, 
that you may this may be an ideal place where people are really sharing you know because yes. there's no as you as you may know i do i do shows in 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 southboro and northboro and in marlboro and this in 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 hopkinton in this area there's a lot of talent there now not as good as westboro i understand but there's a lot of talent there and so the notion of developing you know, a kind of a, a, a kind of a of everybody together constituting a center for innovation, where people are doing different things and seeing what works. Just sounds like a great idea. Just a great yeah, idea. Yeah, I I really think it's it's one that we need to you know, continually uh, consider to look at and, and to look for the, those avenues. Um, I think the other the other thing apart from the technology and apart from you know uh, our master plan of of making sure we're fit for purpose is we don't know what the future is going to bring in terms of the financing. You know, the model is, as we've talked about, is that the, the, the cable companies, uh, in our case, uh, Charter and Verizon, uh, pay a modest amount for the use of the infrastructure here in town, and that goes to fund Westboro TV. Um, part of that is that we get uh, three channels uh, on, on each of those. So we have uh, 24, 26, 28 on Verizon, and uh, you'd have to remind me, Aidan, of the Charter ones, but. OK, so we've got those channels and are they going to, under the legislation, should it uh, pass, are they going to be able to say, well, you know, much as the existing contract is, we have to give you those. Now we are able to charge for them. Um, that's something we don't know. My opinion on that is OK. That's a negotiation to be had if it happens. I actually right now, uh, Karen and I talk about this and together with the board and we say, well, OK, Come the, come the time, do we actually need three channels? Do we go down to two? Do we actually say rather than having three and, and maybe they say, hey, each of those is, uh, is uh, 100,000 a year. Um, do we say, fine, we're going to save 100,000 at least by going down to two, uh, but you give us HD for one of them or both of them. Um, do we say, you know, um, uh, does the town say, um, okay, but you know, guess what? The cost of our infrastructure has gone up in the meanwhile. So, you know, there's a lot right. to be there's a lot to be negotiated. Um, and we also have the state, as you know, looking at uh, different legislation as to whether it might in time tax the Internet providers um, in, in a different manner, as some states have done. I think Massachusetts stepped back from that first time round because pre-COVID, uh, the situation in Massachusetts was that the, uh, the state was relatively um, financially sound. Who knows what's going to happen post COVID? And somebody may say, let's revisit that and see if we can raise some money. Um, so, I, I really, much as I would love to talk about all of that and be definitive, no way can I or any of us on this, on this program do that. Um, what I can say, though, is that um, I think, you know, through uh, uh, the town's cable committee, that's uh, um, again being set up because we're entering negotiations with Verizon. We have the opportunity you know, as a community to actually talk to Verizon to say, OK, this is what we have right now. Here are things that we might want as part of the future. Um, what's that? How does that pan out with you? What's it going to cost? What, what you know, what's the situation? And um, you know, I really, really through this program and any other avenue, really um, urge people to think about getting involved with that committee just by uh, contacting Christy Williams, the town manager, and there's still uh, seats available. Um, uh, I don't think we haven't yet had our first meeting, and I'm not quite sure who the chair is going to be, Shelby, but uh, I'm sure we'll... <laughs> think of someone. Yeah, we'll think of someone fairly soon. We'll think of someone. Um, so but, so but, I uh, wanted to... Yeah, sorry, carry on, because you know, th th there's, there's just so much that one could say, but it's all conjecture. Yeah. So I, I just wanted to add because I know we, you know this is a this is really fascinating. I think it's very important and it's a great intro for folks to be involved in that negotiation. But I want to kind of add kind of an editorial kind of comment and question, which is going back to what we talked about last week. My view of this, the reason why I really believe I really believe in this, and as you know, I'm on the cable committee, you know, in far far away Nantucket, which sounds like by by the way, oh my God, it's Nantucket with a ton of money. But, you know, the average income in Nantucket is really not substantial. I mean, you can't buy a house there, but that's because the money flies in and flies out. So the folks there are just the folks, you know, like the folks here. And, and, the, one, of the, and, and what, one of the things we talk about there a lot 
and 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 it's certainly apropos in every community is with the with the kind of disintegration of the print media in the long run if we don't have these stations there will be no place where you can have a community conversation about anything unless you're all going to the meeting you know which and who can do that you know so 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 in the longer run, and the reason why I mention that is, is as we know, one of the one of the questions that you that, that you and Karen raised before was this whole question of people now cutting so-called cutting the cable yeah. and, and, and not and there and therefore not paying one of the big cable operators and therefore your revenue going down. And I think I think from for me in the longer run, to the extent that that ends up being a significant number, at some point, the town has to step in. The communities have to step in in order to maintain the viability of this communications thing, because this is not about a couple little cute programs like ours, which are very cute, you know, um, and a number of others. This is about maintaining a mechanism to, to maintain your community. Yeah. And, 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 and folks, yeah. fo folks have been able to do that kind of for nothing to this point but in the longer run this i think one of the things COVID has illustrated this is an ex essential community activity right absolutely and again this is where i think that the town benefits from the decisions made previously um the fact that the the the, the money from the cable companies comes directly to westboro tv through a pass-through has enabled us to put a, an extraordinary amount of money into our assets you know, it's not just about, OK, paying salaries and wages, etc. But we really do look to our assets and say, how is it that, that we can, what is it we can do to ensure our future, whatever that future might be? And you're absolutely right, Arthur, because, you know, we may end up, um, you know, we know our current budget and income that is reducing every year. And, and, and we're seeing a, an almost 5% drop in income per annum from the, the, the these companies. Um, let us make sure that in the meanwhile, though, we use that money wisely so that, you know, we can sort of say, OK, where can we reduce going forwards? Well, we've got everything we need for now. You know, it will be one of those uh, discussions to be had. And so right. uh, the fact that we are investing right now isn't just because we've got money to spend. We're actually investing for the future, whatever it might hold. And if I could add something to that, um, I believe all of the the investments that we are making um, are towards one goal. Um, it's to make sure that we're able to cover as many town events, uh, government meetings, school concerts um, as we can and do it with the increasing quality to deliver the best product that we can to the citizens of Westboro. Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. Aiden. And the fact that I think increasingly you know, we are playing out um, important say, uh, programs live you know, people are actually getting that real-time information. Um, I, I know Shelby probably hates it when uh, there's, a, you know, there could be a, um, you know, an item on the town meeting that might just sort of uh, attract a lot of attention. That uh, I know some folks just sit and watch Westboro TV until we get to uh, we get to that item, and then everybody descends on 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 the high school to uh, to attend and vote. But you know what? That's democracy. Um, yep. You know, and, and the fact that we are you know, giving people that real time information, we're allowing them to make decisions, we're informing them. And as I, I think I said last week, you know, I really feel as I not just talk around town, but you know, it's important to listen to people around town. We, I think, are very much now part of the collective part of the community. Uh, you know, we are seen as an integral part of the jigsaw when it comes to what's going on around Westboro. And yeah. long may that last. Well, and, and I'll sort of transition in the time that we have left. First of all, I want to thank you, Steve and Aiden, for being on uh, today's show and sort of rounding out this first part of our collection of, you know, Westboro TV discussions. And, you know, Arthur and I look forward to um, working with the station and the community um, to bring forward that public conversation as we enter into contract negotiations. And yours truly um, was just appointed last night by the board to be on the cable advisory committee. So I'm very oh, cool. oh, oh yeah. this is big, isn't it? Big news, big news. Um, but no, I'm very excited to be another working. Another pay increase, that. another pay increase, another pay <laughs> increase. Yep. On but top I, of that selection salary, this is big. <laughs> But I, but in uh, you know, as an example of bringing important community discussions, um, 
the town seal um, and the um, proposed uh, idea of changing the town seal is uh, at the forefront of uh, the, the community. The Board of Selectmen talked about that last night um, and um, uh, we'll be having public meetings about that. But next week on our show, we'll have Dr. Tony Weber, who is our town historian and archivist, come on and talk about the history of the town seal. And again, it's, it's important that that information is factual and it's unbiased and it's just delivering content for people to chew on and contemplate and then circulate in their own circles so that they're informed when and if ultimately this goes to town meeting for a vote, uh, which, you know, I fully anticipate whether the Board of Selectmen bring it or a citizen's petition brings it, it will be on a future town meeting warrant. So um, with that, um, Arthur, have a great vacation. And that, is a, and that is a great point. That is exactly the point of these shows and of cable TV, yep. to have that discussion. You're not just hearing it on social media and blah, blah, blah from the two sides but you're getting real facts, real information that everybody hears. So thank you, thank you very much, Steve. Thank you, Aiden, again, for being on our show. Thank you. Shelby, once again, thanks for always orchestrating on this. By the way, you look, your hair looks terrific, by the way. I just wanted to mention Don't get that. a cut. And, 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 and I'm, yes, I'm away for two weeks, not on, not on Nantucket, but on that other island. But in the meantime, I know you'll be doing a great job and, and I'm looking forward to being back. And thank you folks for watching. I hope you are at least entertained and hopefully informed uh, by this show once again. And we'll, hope, we'll look forward to seeing you on the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Westboro, the COVID-19 edition. Thank you.